Some time ago, I started watching The Walk Between Lawyer. The videos show how virtually all locks, padlocks and other security devices which we use in our daily lives have weaknesses that can be used to defeat them. Also, there's something very satisfying about the way most locks are bypassed. Of course, I'm not talking about the brute force methods, but rather manipulating the mechanism that is inside the lock. Nice click. So I decided to make a mini game to open virtual locks in a more or less realistic way. As my best experience with virtual locks was in the game The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, which is an awesome game, one of the most remarkable games for me. But the locks are pretty boring. Basically, the only challenge is to position the tool at the right angle and apply tension. So it is almost as if all locks in the game have a single pin. Well, before starting making the game, it's helpful to understand more or less how a lock works in real life. For this, I strongly recommend the Lockpick and Lawyers Internal Perspective series. In short, locks have some key components. A core, key pins, driver pins with springs, and the shell, which surrounds everything. To open the lock, all the pins have to be aligned at the shear line, within the core and the shell. So the core can rotate and activate the mechanism that opens the door or something like that. For this, regular people use a key which has cutouts that position the pins at the correct height at the same time. But how does it work in lock picking? First, we usually use a tool to apply tension to the core, which can even be a screwdriver. Then with another tool, a narrow one, like a paper or a hair clip or a pick, we position each one of the pins individually. But won't a pin fall back to its place if I move to the next pin? And how do I know the correct position of each pin? Here is a set of factors at work. When the core is tensioned, the driver pins get squeezed in the shear line, so they end up getting stuck there. When a pin reaches the right position, you feel a click, because the driver pin is no longer binding and rests on the outer wall of the core. Due to small variations in the manufacturing processes, the pins do not have exactly the same diameter, nor do the holes in the core and the shell. This means that some pins will bind before others, so they need to be picked in the correct order. There are still lots of other complications like safety pins that mess things up, so I didn't consider them for now. I will only consider standard pins. And with that knowledge, I made the simple game in Pygame. It works like this. To tension the lock, the player uses the W key, but to make it more interesting, the tension needs to be within two limits. Too little tension and the lock doesn't turn. But if it is too much, the pins get jammed and cannot be manipulated. I call this the Flappy Bird tensioning system. To manipulate the pins, the player positions the tool with the mouse up and down to select a different pin, and with the left click to start picking from side to side. When a pick is positioned correctly, a click occurs and the lock rotates a bit. After all pins are set, the lock opens. I didn't use physics in the implementation, I just compared the positions of the pick with the position that the pin should be and rotate the sprites according to the angle limit. To make the experience more like the lock picking lawyer, I added some audio clips which informs the player about the pin situation. Click out of two. Then by varying the number of pins in the locks I have a simple level system and by measuring the time that takes to open I have a simple record system. The game itself is somewhat interesting. Of course it's far from opening a lock in real life. Nice click out of six. But at least it's much better than the Skyrim locks. And then I thought. Being a sort of casual game, it would be nice to play it on the phone, in the comfort of a couch. So I researched some possibilities about turning the Pi Game app into an Android app. I even tried some solutions with Buildzoid, but they were quite complicated and I couldn't make it work by any means. Another possibility would be to remake the game using PyDroid with Pygame. But then it gets a bit boring having to configure the entire environment on the phone. What I really wanted was a standalone app that can be installed in a simple manner. So I decided to try the Unity engine. With it, it is relatively easy to create versions of a game for multiple platforms and WebGL, where you can run games directly in the browser. 
there was just one small problem. I never used it before and I didn't know anything about C Sharp, its main programming language. And to make matters worse, I'm not very familiar with object-oriented programming. Considering that the game I made was quite simple, it was a perfect candidate for a first project. So I downloaded Unity and started doing some tutorials to get some basic concepts, try some tools and get familiar with the interface. Then I started my own project, importing all the images and sounds I used in the Python project. After that I started adding the backgrounds and placing the elements, like the lock, the tensioner and the pick, and learned about the render order and layers. Then I had to learn how to capture the mouse movement and key presses, how to make objects rotate and move in the screen, and so I was able to remake the game's base in about two days. After that I spent some time trying to understand the Unity sound system. I had to watch some brackets tutorials to make it work but I still find it a bit messy and confusing. Then I passed to the interface part, with the main menu and the level selection. This part was relatively easy because Unity has several pre-made buttons and other elements, so I managed to do the main menu in about one day. Then I made the pause menu, which is similar to the main menu, but it occurs in the same scene of the game. And like that I had a game very similar to the original in about a week, but this was for the Windows desktop version. I actually didn't want this version, I already had the Python version to run in Windows. So I started testing the build for WebGL. Most of the game worked fine, I just had one little problem. The mouse pointer was escaping the game screen on WebGL. So I spent a couple more days trying to figure out how to make the mouse work correctly in WebGL. But it worked. And now, on the itch.io page you can play the lockpick enjoyer without downloading anything. I mean, you will have to download it, but it is all inside the page. Now that I achieved my first goal, I started working on the Android version. The first thing I did was to build the game to an APK file, to see how it would look like on my phone. To my surprise, the main menu worked fine, but after that the game locked up because the mouse and keyboard inputs do not work, so I started to study how to implement touch screen controls in Unity. I tried simulating a mouse and using a joystick for the controls, but it just didn't feel right. Then I started to use the sliders. First I just positioned them on the right side of the screen. That worked more or less fine, but it was a bit awkward. Then came the idea, why not move the pick directly with touch. So I put the slider handle directly on top of the pick to position it, hiding the rest of the slider. The other slider I kept on the side, because overlapping the two could cause problems. But I also kept only the handle, so it looks cleaner. So I think it's decent, you can play the game without struggling too much with the controls. And finally after about 2 weeks I got an Android version of the game, which is also available for download on itch.io. But I also wanted to put the game on the Play Store to share it with my family and friends. So, after a tedious process with some more tutorials to support the app on the format that the Play Store requires and after filling several forms, finally you can download it directly from the Play Store. In general, I still prefer to work with Python and Pygame, but unfortunately, in relation to development for other platforms, it is a bit complicated and cumbersome. Unity is a well-established game engine with lots of learning material available, so it's relatively easy to learn. Only sometimes you get a bit overwhelmed with the amount of tools available. I also want to explore other engines, like the Godot engine, which also supports several platforms and is open source. I just thought it would be a little harder to learn, because there isn't as much support material available yet. Sometime in the future I intend to implement the same game in the Godot engine, to compare it with Unity and Pygame. So stay tuned if this is something that you are interested in. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Click out of one, pin one is set, pin two is binding, click out of two, pin three is binding, click out of three, and we got this open.